are these people? Yeah, so I titled this Hold Your Head Down. Mm. Um, there's a reason why I called it that. Um, you'll find out in a minute. But yeah, so I wanted to give an update regarding what happened at Morehouse's commencement since Biden was, spoke at their commencement over the weekend. We talked extensively regarding some Morehouse students airing their grievances with the school president regarding how they didn't want Biden, you know, coming speaking given his um, political record and especially given what is going History on of racism. in Gaza right now. And and the school president basically said, we will take your grievances to account. And obviously they didn't because Biden still came and spoke. So I'm sure many of you saw, I know a lot, um, some of you, I know Sabi talked about this. I know Do Dissonance talked about this um, commencement on their streams. I want to highlight some things that they might not have talked about, uh, or at least sure. go into it a little bit more. Um, obviously, we know about Biden speaking. We're not going to do that because his speech was trash. Um, I kind of want to talk about some of the things, and I, I, I find it, I kind of, well, some of it I can argue it was definitely protests, and then some regarding the commencement, not so much. Uh, mm. I'll call it protest light at best, but it really wasn't anything disruptive that would have made Biden uncomfortable, I would say. So um, so our first clip tonight, I want to play actually what happened at the baccalaureate service the night well, before commencement. Luckily, um, Biden has so, always just felt uncomfortable around a large group of Black people. So there's that. <laughs> true. <laughs> you know? um, true. Um, but I do want to highlight um, the baccalaureate uh service that happened at Morehouse the day before. So it was two hours, so we're not going to play the whole thing. I do want to highlight um, a part of it um, where the Reverend Reginald Ray Wayne Sharp Jr. spoke at. Um, I believe Reverend he's a Wayne. pastor at a church. I believe um, he's a senior pastor at a church based in Chicago, I believe. That when I, when I checked on him, but um, but he is a Morehouse alum, uh, so he was asked to give the main speech at the baccalaureate. So it's a forty-minute speech, so we're not obviously not going to watch the whole thing. Yes. Um, but I'm going to pull apart from a clip that I wouldn't say went viral, but this was what was featured on Twitter over the weekend. I'm going to play a little bit more of it, uh, just to give some guys a little bit of context into what he was saying, uh, but what he was saying regarding, you know, kind of taking a jab at Biden slash uh, the Morehouse administration in his way. Um, so we'll watch that first, and then I definitely have some thoughts on it. I know you definitely had some thoughts on it when I think you yeah. watched it, um, but we'll talk about it once uh, we finish. So you can Count go ahead. Count how many extra syllables are added on to words just for people at home. Um, this is just me growing up in the South around churches. I very much appreciate the extra syllables. On the yeah, so useful. warning that is going to be like the black Pentecostal. Yes. Um, the good stuff. Tone yes. To it's me. So, yeah. Go ahead. Because when you face them days, you better remember who the Lord is. He'll lift your head. Can we just back into the verse? Can we just back Sorry, into I need, it? I don't want to drive. Church I want to reverse into the verse. Hold on. Uh, I need I, 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 go, go to the end. It says, God lift the up of mine head. Which literally means God will alter our focus. 2 Samuel 15, 30, David is walking up the mountain with the cloak over his head because he's so stressed. He's right. so sad, he's so depressed that his head is bowed and his spirit is low. But somewhere between 2 Samuel 15 and 30 and Psalm 3 and 3, God became the lift. God, duh. 
And you do know, before we rejoice over the fact that God will lift our heads, can we acknowledge the fact that there are some real realities that cause us to drop our heads? When we see a 23-year-old black U.S. airman gunned down by police in his own home, it'll make you drop your head. When we see millions of dollars invested in building Cop City here in Atlanta while displacing black families to build a mock city for police training, it can make you hold your head down. When Donald Trump can possibly become president again with four federal indictments, 88 federal charges against him, he's been in court more than he's campaigned, it Reverend, can make you hold that? your head down. And I know some of y'all don't agree like me. It's all right when you preach your sermon, preach it the way you want to preach it. But today I'm going to preach mine the way God told me to preach it. Yeah. When the United States continues to send billions of dollars to fund weapons to Israel, it'll make you pull your head down. When almost 35,000 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza, while 1,200 people have been killed in Israel, it'll make you hold your head down. When institutions who taught us to be socially conscious turn and ask for us to become conveniently silent, it'll make you hold your head down. When just this past week, a fourth grader dies by suicide because of bullying, revealing our nation is in the midst of a mental health crisis. And prayers and church alone will not heal every mental illness. We need Christ and a couch, theology and therapy, meditation and medication. It'll make you hold your head down. When we see peaceful protesters attacked and carried away like animals, all while some others with the complexion for the protection are taken by Burger King after yeah. murdering nine right. people in Bible study mm -hmm. in Charleston, South Carolina, it'll make you hold your head down. On the 70th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education this weekend, schools in black and brown communities received $23 billion less than schools in white neighborhoods. It'll make you hold your head down when you can ban books about black history in Florida but can't ban assault rifles in Tennessee to protect our children while they're in school it'll make you hold your what head Malcolm down. say about that and if all of that in the world isn't enough just trying to wake up black Breathing while black, driving while black, dreaming while black. The daily stress of life. I'm almost done. I know y'all ready to go eat. All right. So, so just give. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of say again, this is not. He's not the valedictorian. This is not the commencement service. This is the baccalaureate service that took place the day before commencement. So mm -hmm. this is Reverend Sharp. Uh, he's a Morehouse alum. So he was asked to speak at this, at this event. Uh, ceremony uh, the day before. So he was a key speaker for this, just to kind of give context for, friend, for people who are a little confused. Um, but anyway, um, I do want to talk about his speech a little bit because... And I wanted to play the whole thing because um, he kind of mentioned, he kind of, he called, well, I'll say this. Initially, the clip that I saw on Twitter, you can make the case that, yeah, he said a lot of the right things there. But I didn't notice after I did watch most of the speech, his speech over the weekend. And I noticed in it, especially when he got to this part, that he called out Trump easily, but in, in terms of his indictments and all that kind of stuff and just the idea of, yeah. like, you know, democracy is in peril, you know. But he didn't call out Biden by name in terms to what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that was on purpose. And I actually mentioned this to Savvy on Twitter. I 
have the suspicion, and I could be wrong, but I suspect that he might have been told, given that Biden was going to speak, to not say anything about him directly. You right. can talk around it, but not directly say his name. And you're right. The person to his right was the school president who uh, the students called out in the clip that we talked about or kind of focused on. Mm. Um, I kind of got that. When. I, I kind of got the vibe of that guy who talks, you know, tells Larry David his parents were slave owners on NPR at PBS. Mm -hmm. That's what that guy looked like to me. But that's just, you know, any black guy with giant Coke bottle glasses, I feel like ends up looking right. like that at some point. But that's just right. me. That's the acceptable <laughs> black guy they let on PBS, you know? Right. Um, so, but yeah, it, it, it so compared to what we've seen at Columbia and then like other schools where they really went in, um, like in regarding their protests and really right. became disruptive, this, I would argue this was a very tepid uh, way. I can't even call this a protest at all. Like it wasn't anything where it, it just, it was just played very safe, at least on campus. Uh, I'll get to more of what was happening outside later, which mainstream media will not necessarily talk about. But anyway, I do want to highlight uh, this article from Common Dreams that did talk about what happened at Morehouse. So this was written by Julia Conley, and she writes, Morehouse students show solidarity with Gaza during Biden commencement speech. It is my stance as a Morehouse man, they as a human being, to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, said valedictorian D'Angelo Fletcher. So that clip went viral when he said that, and that was probably featured. You probably saw that on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so Julia continues. Advisors for U.S. President Biden reportedly saw Morehouse College, an historically backed men's college in Atlanta where he gave the commencement address Sunday, as a school where the president was unlikely to face protests over his continued support for Israel's assault on Gaza, which has been the subject of mass demonstrations led by students at universities across the country over the past month. And they were right. <laughs> for all intents and purposes, they were right. Um, cause as I said, their protest was very weak and that's me being nice. Um, but students and faculty made clear at this ceremony that many of them, like others in higher education are intent on sending Biden a strong message of disapproval Letter. over his Israel policy. Strongly worded letters. Yes. A number of faculty members mm. and students were kefefes. The traditional scarves worn in parts of the, of the Middle East, including Palestine, and by some supporters of Palestinian rights to show solidarity with civilians in Gaza. Others displayed the Palestinian flag on their graduation gowns. Good for them. Uh, so this is uh, Celine Rang, who actually, I think she's a local reporter based in Atlanta. Uh, so she took video of when Biden's introduced to give Morehouse College commencement the alumni basically in the hats all sing into the front, um, but all the students sit into the back of them. So it gives the appearance that everyone is standing, mm. um, but the students stay seated. So if you want to play that clip so you can see. But all the kids over here. All the kids that are over there to the right. And all the alumni to the left. Standing up and clapping for Biden. Thank you, thank you, thank you, President Thomas, faculty, staff, alumni. A special thanks. I'll ask all the folks who helped you get here your mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, all those who got you here, all the My way in the back. Please, this parents, this is this. all the help. Stand up because we owe you a debt of gratitude. All the families. Yeah, so so they show their protest by staying seated when he mm -hmm. got up. Okay. So, all right. So the war in Gaza where Israel has killed more than 35,000 since October while receiving billions of dollars in military aid from the Biden administration was directly mentioned by valedictorian D'Angelo Fletcher 
who pl had placed a Palestinian flag motif on his graduation cap. It is my stance as a Morehouse man, nay, as a human being, to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, said Fletcher, as Biden sat behind him and applauded. So yeah, most of you probably saw that, that Biden applauded when he saw that, and when he mm -hmm. said that, and it's just kind of like, well, bro, are you even listening to what he's saying? You know, <laughs> like, um, but then I noticed later, and I'm not sure if people talked about this, that Biden in his speech, called for an immediate ceasefire. He didn't call right. for a permanent one. No. So, so just some of the rhetoric and not entirely what people are pushing for uh, is what he used, um, but still not saying anything as far as a permanent ceasefire, given what is happening in Gaza. Um, anyway. From the comfort of our homes, we watched an unprecedented number of civilians more than loss of men, women, and children while calling for the release of all hostages. Some students and faculty turned their backs when the president gave his address in which he said he supports peaceful, nonviolent protests. Yeah, like, you support that because that's not going to make you feel uncomfortable at all. Right. So the idea of protests only... is to make that's only Go for ahead. the Palestinian people. If it's the Israelis that are counter-protesting, being paid to counter-protest and violently attack others, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Right. Other students walked out of the ceremony, but Biden's speech was not disrupted like the last time he addressed a good of college students at George Mason University when protesters interrupted him 10 times. Biden has been rebuked by First Amendment advocates for suggesting the Palestinian solidarity and anti-war protests that have spread across college campuses in recent weeks are inherently anti-Semitic and for failing to speak out against aggressive police responses to protests at schools, including Emory University, Columbia University, and UT at Austin. It is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. That's why I call for an immediate ceasefire, an immediate ceasefire to stop the fighting. Bring the hostages home, said the president, adding that he is working around the clock to ensure a two-state solution in the Middle East and to ensure aid is allowed into Gaza, where key border crossings are now closed by Israel. So Bibi doesn't want a two-state solution. So how are you planning to secure a two-state solution when Bibi doesn't want that, sir? Ain't doing shit. Right. So, Yeah. A majority of Americans disapprove of Israel's assault on Gaza, and Black voters, a key constituency who supported Biden in 2020, are no exception. The Carnegie Endowment for International Peace found last month that 68% of Black Americans wanted the U.S. to demand an immediate and permanent ceasefire, and 59% said conditions must be applied to U.S. military aid to Israel to ensure the Middle Eastern country is using U.S. weapons for legitimate self-defense and in a way that is consistent with human rights standards. While 66% of Black Americans overall said their feelings toward Biden have not changed due to his Israel policy, that's kind of high to me, yeah. um, especially given Israel's tie to the police here. Yeah. Um, those under age 30 were more likely to say their views on the president had become more negative since October. Um, so... Just to give more examples of what protests were shown at commencement. So, uh, at Amberisms tweeted, this was a video, but I just, clicked, just took the screenshot. It's this Morehouse professor pointing to the divest sign as Spine speaks for me and the Congo flag that you noticed that you probably saw behind him. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into Congo, as I said, much later in the show. Um, so, so we talked, so basically at Morehouse, at least at that commencement, there was a whole lot of nothing. Like the most people did was turn their backs at Biden, which given what the pictures I saw were not too many, no one walked out, no one was disruptive. Uh, it wasn't the shenanigans that we've seen on college campuses. That being said though, and this is something that mainstream media will not report on, there were some shenanigans going outside campus. So this is from uh, Senyabu 
Ramu at Senior Clark, uh, who I guess is a citizen journalist, I guess, based mm -hmm. at least she was in Atlanta uh, over the weekend. So she did several tweets where she talked about the protests that were happening outside and around Morehouse. So she tweeted, around 200 Palestinian protesters on the intersection of Joseph E. Lowry and Atlanta Student Movement Boulevard Southwest chanting, APD, KKK, IDF is all the same. Yeah. So she continues, protesters are chanting every time the media lies and they have a neighborhood in Rafa die down Sells Avenue towards Morehouse College, where Biden is set to speak shortly. Um, so here's some videos she took of uh, passers-by honking and <laughs> with the protesters. Mm. So there are some protesters there, um, and she continues tweeting, about half a dozen prison transport vans had arrived in contrast to the Palestinian protesters at Morehouse campus. Resistance is justified, they chant. So just in case there was some shenanigans, Atlanta was ready. So these are the vans that they had on the ready. Just in case. There were to be some things happening. Old paddy wagons. Yeah. So a little more with the police. Atlanta police is here smoking vapes with zip ties on hand. So you can play this. Yeah, I have memories of four years ago. I'm just yeah. standing there. Just standing there with zip ties. Again, just prepared. For, yeah, so... Um... So I want to play this. Uh, this is from Mary, this clip. There are a couple of clips from Mary Hooks. Apparently, she introduced herself to Senya Boo uh, as the president of Black Lives Matter Atlanta uh, at the, at the uh, Palestinian rights. So she interviewed her real quick. And here's what she had to say regarding Biden uh, going to Morehouse to speak at their commencement. The greatest threat is militarism, capitalism, and racism. And, and Morehouse has betrayed that legacy. So no, fuck Morehouse. On the Green. record. And I am saying that to not the students. The students have been righteous. Always the spear of our movements. Always the one on the right side of history. Fuck Morehouse and the administration and the people in power that actually got the... the the position to do something, to stand Talk for to something, him. to be about something beyond just giving money to Israel and the police and thinking you're doing the right thing. If your vision is that as far as you get, then you don't deserve to be head of Morehouse. You don't deserve to, to claim any sort of leadership in this city or this country for that matter. No, Talk fuck Morehouse. Him. Agreed. Sorry, I went off a little bit. Don't be sorry. But what do you have to say about Morehouse administration? um supporting protests behind closed doors but in public sending out police and um going on news stations saying that they actually don't support protests 
Unfortunately, I couldn't see her response there, but I can answer for you. They're cowards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, straight uh -huh. up cowards. You know, Public like... A lot private of... positions, as always. Right. So, I do have another clip from her, because she continues to go off. Um, so, here she goes. She continues with, regarding something else, but... Inside Joe, our raggedy president has given raggedy. billions of dollars in the tradition of the U.S., have given billions of dollars to fund this genocide in Palestine. Our police officers are literally going over to Israel, training with these murderers, yes. taking 85 acres of land right behind the Starlight Drive-In to build a militarized training center. And they want to do this in the face of black people with all of this suffering we see in the street. They won't wink out billions of dollars in reparations. They ain't build out billions of dollars to cure you know, the homeless problem. They ain't shelled out billions of dollars, you know what I mean, to take care of the health care system. You know what I mean? The homeless, all of the land. And it's like, what do we deal with the money that we send across states and across seas that we don't get over here, that we make over here? And everything they got for our community that's been needing healing is the police. When our people been needed programs, when our people been needed ways, you know what I mean, to, to get involved, to, to get good education, a righteous education. But all they do is send the police. They ain't got nothing better for our people than the cage and to control our people. How long these folks been in America? And how long black people don't been in America? But yet they gonna jump out and fight for their right. There's some shit that we need to do, you feel me? And that's how you folks out here sticking together for their country, for their rights, you feel me? But we've been here since birth. We ain't doing it. And we've been doing it. Oh, yeah, we have. Oh, we've been doing it. We got to do it like this. We got to do it like this. And not quit, not give up. So what you feel like we need from, from our black men? Now, what would you like to speak from your brother? We need more politicians from our black people. We don't have none of us in office. I've been looking at power and they got, they got what, what his name, Rashad Tate in office, man, but he was doing stuff. We got to get a Rashad Tate in office, man. We got to get somebody that's going to work for us. Rock did something, but he ain't doing enough, you feel me? He's still out here going through poverty, dealing with mental issues, dealing with homeless, dealing with gang violence, gun violence. It's crazy, getting worse, you feel me? Every time you look on the news, more than like two, three people done got shot. Not just one, not just two, not just I will, I, I will I mean, advise him, we don't need no more politicians, homie. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, but this is, this is regular you don't folks. To take that, you don't need to take that this whole power back. Not just the right. power but they these, think you can have. This so, is regular folks. No, these are the people that I talk to, or at least have access to. And yeah. they see, and are I they, mentioned this on Twitter, know what's up. people are seeing, like, because the idea of people saying like, oh, it takes for, forever and a day to implement policy, progressive policy on the federal level. It doesn't have to because we have seen, you know, politicians like over the past few weeks working overtime to ensure Israel gets more weapons. Israel gets more money. Ukraine gets this. This gets that. We're seeing money go out the door to these foreign nations. Meanwhile, anything regarding healthcare homelessness, you know, fill in the blank, you know, politicians cannot get their acts together. But when it comes to Israel, and again, we know why, you know, money is going out the door basically every waking moment. But so people are seeing this and they're making the connections that, oh, you're able to send money to Israel for weapons, but you can't deal with the poverty issues that are have been in our cities and in our towns where you're able to send money to Israel, but you can't deal with healthcare in this country, you know, and this is on, and, and especially given that this is happening on the local level, this is what, and this is why I tell people as far as, you know, electoralism, you cannot hope for a politician to come in and try to do all the things that you want without dealing with the rot that's in the system first. And no Inside. one has necessarily spoken to how they're going to uproot the rot, even the politicians that we like. So, sorry, not sorry, but the, and the, I know Indy, you know, wrote a substack regarding this, uh, regarding, you know, two um, 
you know, commentators in this space that we're not going to give promo to. You guys know who they are. But the idea that they are kind of clamoring around um, and then uh, a third party candidate, which considering what they've said or not what they have said regarding the Green Party, you know, forever, you know, make, you know, it's very weird that all of a sudden that Gaza apparently was their red line mm-hmm. and now they're going, they're singing There's some praises new ones in that group too. the Green Party, yep. you know. Um, I told you not to give her promo. <laughs> what? I, I'm not. It's Sticks, bro. I got to play Sticks. Like, who doesn't love Sticks? Um, <laughs> you know. I mean, I could have gone with but, Mr. Roboto, you know? It's a great right. band, bro. But, but point being is that, you know, these are regular schmegular people who are seeing the money going out the door. And it's not being used here in terms of the needs within the local community or at least trickling down to the local community other than like as mary said um hiring more police which again is happening under biden right now not under trump um yeah so i do want to end with this regarding morehouse and I and as mary said Black mary Empire. said you know like can't blame the students I mean, I can, honestly, I can, because, and and, and I've said this, you know, like, I get the fear, especially as a person of color protesting, because we have a lot more to lose, especially given what's at stake, especially as Black men. But however, you have the whole world in your favor if you walk out. The whole like, wide you didn't have world. to sit there. You didn't have to sit there. You could have just left. You know? And the threat that the president gave was, oh, if anyone disrupts, we're going to cancel commencement. Fine! Cancel it! You know? You're not going to get your diplomas until a, a month or two anyway. So what? You know? Stand for something. You know? This was a school where MLK went to. You know, and notice how people did not move, and especially given that it was Malcolm X's birthday on Sunday as well. You didn't walk in that tradition in terms of actually standing up for something. Morehouse? Come on now. Um, So as I said, Howard did shit last year, and Morehouse didn't do much better, to be quite honest. Um, But I'll end with Friend of the show, uh, Black in the Empire. Uh, don't think we've read any of his tweets for a while, a but while. I think he sums his, I think he sums up what happened at Morehouse perfectly, where he says, "Only in America can a man who worked with segregationists to fight busing, wrote and pushed the laws that led to black mass incarceration, and be provided the weapons for the genocide, give a commencement address at a black college, like nothing ever happened." Amen. Mm. So, I mean, sorry, Morehouse, but you guys were terrible in terms of actually using your leverage uh, to actually make moves and actually stand in solidarity. And even with the article that said you stood for solidarity, yeah, you did it in a way that Biden was okay with. You know, you you know, it's protests are meant to be chaotic. Sorry, so you know, and I get it in terms of what that meant for you in terms of um your possibly you know given your futures and all, but I don't know. It, it was just very frustrating overall. But I hear you. Um. But anyway, if <laughs> why end the segment, please? <laughs> I mean, I'm just... Just, no, I'm just, I'm just really living right now. Honestly, now I feel you, dude. Because... Well, if if, <sighs> if you're just as angry as Colin is, and you want to throw your money at the problem, throw it at us. Co-dot.com/slash/any-news-network. 
scan that QR code on your screen as well, or put exclamation mark donate in the chat if you want to leave us a super chat. Um, that would be nice. But you know, if you can't can't give that way, like, subscribe, share the video. Very easy stuff to do. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think. You know, and keep doing you.